We'll see. We'll see how it goes. But hello, we've got Mr. Gecko in chat. We've got Roncat in chat. Hello, hello. Oh, hello. But this time, as I say, we've got a one versus one in a in a quick cast, shall we say, between a, that son of a broom in orange, wherever he decides to spawn, and Daddy's back, which is Nick, Nickel MX, as you'll know from other casts, if you've been following uh, the channel. Now, this map, Snowball, is unique. The spawn location, players can choose anywhere in the snowy region of the map to start. Which means that straight away, there's a little bit of mind games going on. A little bit of analysis. Where am I going to start? Am I going to start in the obvious four metal? Nice and easy to grab. Or am I going to start in the harder to take three metal initially, but closer to an equatorial four metal? Or am I going to go and start in the navy? Who knows? But I can say hello to people instead. Hi, Hono! PA instead of Star Wars? Yeah. I was playing Star Wars recently, but I've had a couple of casts submitted. I'm going to get through them today. A surprise, to be sure, but a welcome one, and that it is. Finally a surprise. Here we go. Nick! What was it I said about uh, starting in the harder to get metal and going straight for the equatorial stuff? That will be Nick. S uh, hello. <laughs> okay. Ignore my inability to control the camera. Nick here in blue going bots at first. Into, what was it? Air and then bots and then air, air. Oh, wow, that's a lot of air. That is a lot of air. That is a lot of air. And not a lot else. A lot of air, a lot of power, and a metal storage. Meanwhile, on the south, Broom, rather conservative. Straddling a couple of spawns here. Straddling a triple and a four. Going bots into air. Looks like a second air into fourth bot factory. That is most interesting. Sending off a couple of fabs together. Typical Nick going for a third fab going forwards to grab that four mech straight away in the trees. Broom though being a little bit more cautious, getting out an Icarus that will help defend either defend his uh, fabs or go and harass any that Nick is expanding with. Nick sending out Firefly there, going to go and have a look at where his opponent has spawned straight away. Typically players do tend to put out a Firefly as their first unit. There we go, he sees exactly where Broom is. He sees that he's got a couple of fabs and an Icarus. So he thinks, ha! Icarus to defend fabricators? Are you mad? Let me just send over a hummingbird. Here it comes. Looking for that Icarus. Sees the commander, thinks, uh-oh. Hummingbirds beat Icarus, but commander beats hummingbird. Mm, that's a shame. I still remember the days when fireflies used to have a little pew-pew weapon on them. I remember a game in Alpha where I think we almost crashed a server by getting a thousand fireflies and seeing if it could snipe a commander that way. Um... I'll tell you this, to get three shots off of that entire group of fireflies took about ten minutes. That's how much it slowed down. But that's neither here nor there. Broom expanding out with two fabs now towards the east, going for the three mechs slowly but surely, and two fabs again towards this triple mechs close by. But Nick coming in with the docks. Got to watch out for the docks. Those will kill off those fabricators if Broom is not careful. There is one defender. But he will get taken down here. Losing both fabs there. That's a little bit of uh, mismanagement there from Broom. Really should have had more defense <clears throat> of those fabricators. Coming out with a couple of air fabs now. Risky, considering how much Nick is going for the air. What has Broom actually seen here? So Broom has managed to scout Nick's base. He sees the one air factory, and that's about it. He won't have seen the second one. Nick just swarming docks all over the planet. Of course, with a planet this size, bots will be favoured because of their advanced movement speeds compared to tanks. What you've got to do is be particularly aggressive and on a map with this uh, spread of metal. You really want to get as much vision as you can. And that's where the air comes into play. And that is not 
what Icarus are good at. They have limited vision, <coughs> limited weaponry, limited mobility. So, suboptimal plays from Broom today. Grotesquely suboptimal. There you go. Nick picking off more fabricators. Broom struggling a little bit. Local trees having forest fires as well, which is going to limit his ability to harvest those later in the game. There you go. Nick just being an absolute pain. And even look at this. If Nick is allowed to get this proxy base up here, that's that's curtains, honestly. And vehicles. There you go. Closing the gap. And then supporting with vehicle factories. A lot of uh, new players tend to get to metal and then just spam up some turrets. Better way to do things? Get a few factories up there. That basically makes an army at your expansion. Much more effective at holding expansions than one or two turrets. One or two turrets can be countered by the correct unit choice. Armies, however, add pressure. Turrets do not. And now look, Broom is on the full defensive. He has got a naval factory, which I was surprised by. Nick's not bothered with it. Looking at the, uh, the economy tab there. Of course, you'd expect to see it. Nick far and away outstripping that of Broom's economy. Same with his army. But the fab account for Broom is much larger. That's because the air fabs and the vehicle fabs in the base here. Got a few bot factories, uh, bot fabs rather, over the side as well. <clears throat> Won't be too long, I wouldn't have thought, before Nick considers going up to T2. But maybe he just feels like he wants to add more and more and more pressure with copious amounts of T1 units. And that might well be what he's doing. Broom going to counter this, though. Sending a commander forward using that mobility. Look at this. Pushing an already boosted commander in the recent balance patch. You can walk a little bit faster. The beast commander there. 1v1ing a turret and missing every shot. <laughs> every single shot. I was going to say he's a beast, but that was pretty pretty poor show. There we go. Get him a little closer. And down. Oh. Lost about how much of his health there? About 40% of his health for... Not, <laughs> not a lot to show for it. 40% of your health traded for significant embarrassment. All right, I'll have that. <laughs> that... Somehow, Broom's air just evaporated. Uh, that was not good for him. <laughs> the army tab there. Broom's army count is 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 not looking too not looking too feisty. As a result of that, and that also now gives Nick free reign over the base. He doesn't have too many bombers at the moment because he was trying to get air superiority. But now that he knows that he has it. He can probably risk putting in a few more bombers into his mix. It also gives him the ability to scout over the base, maybe trade a few hummingbirds for a little bit of extra vision. But will he do that? I don't know. Pro players don't tend to scout too much. Let's have a look at Broom. Ah, case in point. No additional scouting of the base or the hemisphere even. But a couple of little gunboats here on the North Pole. How serene they are. Sat in a crater. Shooting at those metal extractors. Yeah, let's just zoom out of there a little bit more. You can see the whole hemispheres now. We've got T2 bots up from Broom and up from Nick as well in the uh, the foreground. Interesting little naval base here from Broom. Not doing a whole lot. Just sat there being sneaky peeky like. Nick hasn't yet got his T2 up. Broom there beating him to it. Commander out on his lonesome in the middle. Bit risky there. Especially once Nick sees this commander. 
with bot factories right here, we could see a pivot to boom bots. Or indeed maybe some sniper bots or slammers coming straight out of that advanced bot factory to exploit the fact that this commander is woefully offside. Woefully, woefully offside. In comes the air from Nick again. Broom will get swamped if he catches up. Here it comes. Nick can give chase if he wants. Thinks better of it. Aha, we have a scout. Broom sees a T2 factory. Does he see it? He does. That's significant. I don't think he saw the minefield, though. I say field. I mean line. I mean sporadic polka dot. Who knows? There you go. More air now coming out from Broom. Still not investing in additional air factories. This could be his long-term downfall. Nick continuing to keep the air pressure on, but on the south side here, still sending in a few bots, being a nuisance. Taking out some expansions, just keeping control of Broom's unit. Quantities, hello! Slammers have been forced out there by Combat Fab. Sniper bots, there we go. Trying to keep the commander at bay. You've got to watch out for this Nick there, seeing what the reinforcements are like. Meanwhile, on the other side, we've got Boom bots ready to either snipe something in base or flank a commander. Looks like flanking commander. Here we go. Boom bots running into rocks. That's how we do it. A little bit of extra micro there, please. Nick. Okay, this commander is in a very precarious position. We've got Boombots running towards him, trying to run into slammers there. Commander, get behind your slammers. There are sniper bots sniping you. Get away, pushing in, taking out the sniper bots. Broom there being very, very aggressive with his commander. He really needs to wander back. The thing is... Oh... If that commander retreats away from protection and Nick sends some boom bots over to catch him while he's retreating from the front lines. No. Don't send four. No, you need more than four. Ow. Oh, that's d disappointing. You gotta, you gotta, oh, that would have been amazingly funny. If Broom was retreating with his commander and Nick was like, ah. <laughs> Who's offside now? With his boom bots running away. But there we go. So Nick is going to be focusing his T2 and his bumblebees over here. But that doesn't stop him, look, from attacking in other locations. He needs these attacks elsewhere because that keeps the pressure on Broom's economy. And he needs to have that pressure... To stem the flow of Broom's units. If he can stem the flow of Broom's units, then he can catch this commander with no defense. But I tell you what Broom really needs is a combat fab to heal that commander because he is on 25% of his health. Which, under any metric, is not great vitality. Here we go. Bumblebees. Not enough. Couple of slammers taken down. Bit of a waste there. More bumblebees over the infernos. Again. Not wise use. T2 factory down. That's big. That is big. Does Nick have any advanced fabricators? He doesn't. That is huge that that factory has gone down. Nick now running away. <laughs> the factory goes down. All of the units turn around and leg it. That is huge. Nick now has nothing to deal with this T2. Copious amounts of docks will not... Counter, slammers, snipers, and a commander. That is really not what Nick wanted. And he hasn't even managed to break into Broom's expansions elsewhere on the map. Ah, the last slammer sniped with extreme prejudice. There we go. <laughs> So we've had a beast commander missing every shot against the turret and another beast commander with his tail between his legs running for the protection of water. Sanctuary. Beast commander hunchback like Quasimodo seeking sanctuary. 
There you go. Nick has not got a lot of base left. And that's another broom now. Ahead in the metal with a bit of reclaim there assisting him. Nick's power still up there. And Nick's metal, because the map is so large, he can pull this around. He just has to be somehow sneaky. There you go. Look over here. Air fabs. Building the power. Maintaining that which he's losing. Now he just needs factories. He needs build power. The factory counts are actually still even Stevens, but you've got the force multiplier of the T2 from Broom. Can Nick try and edge his way to a comm snipe? Broom down to 11% of his health. Nick is sending in the odd unit to try and chip away at this commander. Imagine, we've got a couple of uh, narwhals here. If that commander gets too close to those, they will focus down that comm. Not do a huge amount of damage, but gradually will focus it. More booms, watch out, broom! More booms, watch out, broom! <laughs> They're everywhere! They're like dirty socks in a dormitory. They're everywhere. Right. <laughs> Don't ask me where that analogy comes from. Oh, dearie me. Right. <laughs> Nick now replenishing his air factories over on the water and going orbit. What is this? Okay, I probably, if you hadn't already looked in the top right, there is another planet in this system. There's a little lava planet orbiting this one. A little bit of Sanctuary, a little bit of Metal, only 10. But it might keep Nick's commander safe. And give him the time he needs to take out Broomscom, which is currently still sitting on 11%. Having moved into uh, Nick's old premises. There we go, bringing up the Fabricators rather than the Astraeus. The Fabricators can build metal extractors from orbit. So that might well be what Nick is planning on uh, doing. There you go. Away it goes. Not really something that Broom can do much about. He has to get into orbit first to do that. Has Broom still only got the one T2 factory? That is correct. Nick managed to take out Broom's uh, naval dependency there. But, uh-oh. This isn't good for Nick. We've got Slammers walking through the water. Narwhals, unfortunately, though, have torpedo capability now. And trading Slammers for Narwhals is... is not good. It's not good. I don't know why he's doing that. Really, of all the things Nick can do, and he sends Slammers through the water. Come on. Snipe from the shoreline. The commander's head is above the waterline. It's all you need to do. Icarus against hummingbirds. Broom learnt nothing from the start of the game. There we go. Going around the other side. Maybe to cut off an escape route. Whatever you do, Broom, do not leave that commander unprotected. Yes, you've got a resource line. But if Nick can find a way, he will... If you can trust Nick to do anything, it is finding a way. And I guarantee you it will happen. T2 naval. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Oh no. If Nick can rush out a Leviathan or a Kaiju. Kaiju's probably better because it can chase the commander as he runs away. But the Leviathan might only need one or two shots at most if he can keep it hidden. And Broom's Com will be toast. What do we think, chat? What do we think to these plays? This is unbelievable. Let's have a look at what Nick's doing over here. He's got a teleporter just in case he needs to run away. This is quite something. As long as this Leviathan remains unseen. Oh dear, pros don't scout. 
Pros do not scout up. Oh, Broom going to chase into orbit. He sees the orbital launcher and thinks, I want a piece of that lava planet pie. Uh-oh. Getting stuck. Here we go. Into the commander, taking a couple of hits, but defensively impenetrable, this location. Between mountains and icebergs. Really, this is a good place for Nick's commander to sit. Leviathan is revealed. Will Broom run his commander away? He is healing him now, though. What is next? Infernos cannot do anything in the water. <laughs> They're not going to... Oh, my word, Nick. No, please. Get the Leviathan away from those Infernos. Don't do it. Nick! Oh, my word. Oh, that's disappointing. Oh, blunders from both sides. From an all-seeing perspective, it's very easy to critique, though. But let's be honest. That was... stupid. Alright, Broom now with his army size... humongous... in comparison to that of Nick. 470, please. 23. <clears throat> it, oh, it's uh, at the end of everything. At the end of everything, it's a GG. I suppose because his little base over there, his little economy of operations, base of operations, got taken out. And if he hadn't lost that Leviathan to those Infernos, he might have had a chance. Where was Broom's comm anyway? Uh, it was running away, so he didn't even have the ability to use that Leviathan. He should have kept it secret. In the words of Gandalf, keep it secret. Keep it safe. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that was an embarrassment. That's the cast. And I've been Marshall.